everybody wants a house with a view and um, quite often when the builders are building they get the best view on the rooftop. Now as I don't like heights I'm actually going to exit off very quickly here so enjoy the show, this is your new home. Okay guys can you get me off here please? It's roofing day at Jadine's house. The roofers have arrived and are ready to install the fascia and continuous spouting. All right, now I've got the um, fascia and gutter going on today. So we've got the team from Canterbury Continuous um, putting that on for us. Now, just like the name, the um, guttering that we use is continuous spouting. So um, th what that means is there's no joins in it, except for the corners, the external corners and internal corners. But all the nice long runs down the side of the house are all seamless, there's no join. And um, you'll see the guys here, um, they start off with a big round coil which is just a flat piece of colour steel and that gets fed through the machine and by the time it comes out the other end it's formed into um, what you what everyone knows as the spouting or the guttering. Um, it's a really really good system and um, but basically once it's on it's you don't have to worry about it so much. Um, another thing that we'll be adding to that product later is um, snow hooks. Now, with Canterbury, we, I mean, we haven't had a snow this winter yet, but who knows, it might still be coming. But most winters you get, run the risk of having snow, so we'll be adding some snow hooks to that product. And um, that's just a little hook that clips in on the underside of the, the gutter and feeds up to the roof and will get attached to the roof. So for the future, for future proofing the house, you know, if we've got a heavy snow and stuff, we won't lose the spouting, it won't fall off. But uh, the continuous side of things is really, really cool. So um, if that's what you're looking for, a seamless look on the house, then Canterbury Continuous, that's the way to go. While Jadine's roof goes on, over at Jane's house, there's no sign of a roof or the roofers. After an initial burst of building activity, Jane's house is no longer a work site. A frustrated Jane has called a meeting with her building manager, Ivan, to find out what is causing the delays. Right, here we are back at Sun Now. I'm actually here under a bit of duress. There's been a, a bit of a delay with the reef. Um, unfortunately, we've got the GCSB and the NSA and the Five Eyes all watching trying to find Jane's reef. But seriously, Jane's been pressuring me to find out where the reef is. Um, truth of the matter is, rule number 49, it fell off the back of a truck, literally. So it got damaged, and cause reefing's all cut to length. Um, even the 50 millimetres that was damaged would have made it too short for the house. So we had to wait for it to arrive the second time. But I didn't tell Jane, that's where the GCSB comes in. If they were listening to everything we're talking about, Jane would know these things somehow. So um, yeah, so that's why Jane's got me here, thumb screws, everything, she's a vicious woman. <laughs> But well, it's actually really good to hear the reason why things are delayed, Ivan. Because from my perspective, you know, I think I've mentioned before, it's very hard when you don't have any control mm. and you always expect the worst and you're desperate to get in. So, I mean, while I'm concerned about the roof dropping, <laughs> at least I know that, you know, it's what the problem is and um, how we move forward. You know, do we, can we catch up on timelines? Yeah, that's a, a good question. Every client likes that. But um, essentially, no, you can't make up lost time. The fact is a couple of days lost is a couple of days lost for that one item, but you can crawl back items. Oh yeah, you can do some things a little faster, like wrapping the house and windows, etc. So don't panic, Jane. So when's the, when's the house wrap going to, to occur? Have you got uh, any idea for that? Literally two days after the roof, so... Right, OK. I can't remember when I told you the roof's going on, but it'll be two days after the roof goes on. Right, OK. So I think that'll be very early next week. Mm -hmm. So big picture then, where am I at with my timeline now? You know, we, we started off August, then it was November, you know... Oh, I where listen, do you I still think, think November is quite realistic. Okay. Uh, end of November, obviously, we've got to finish before the show ends, <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be ready in time. So it's called Just in Time Building. It's uh, not an easy business, as, as you know. It's hopefully people will learn a little bit about it as the show goes on, particularly with a uh, not a bespoke build. Meanwhile, back at Jadine's house, things are racing ahead. The spouting's in place and the team have already fitted the roof. OK, guys, this time uh, we're at the roofing stage. So quite exciting, actually, to get to this point because now you can really just see how big the house is and what it's going to look from the outside. Really good, too, because we've got a bit of rain coming down um, this afternoon, so finally we'll be undercover, make it a lot easier for the boys to, um, to work below. In this particular case, Jadine has selected the Corona Shake for her roof. So as you can see, it's a press tile product and it comes in um, these sheet sizes and uh, for most people they think oh it must be one big um, piece that goes on your roof but in actual fact it's a number of components about this size. Uh, boys normally start at the bottom work their way up. Um, it's a lightweight roof so 
what that means is with the earthquakes and stuff that we've had recently, um, having a lightweight roof on top is probably more advantageous perhaps than um, some of the tile roofs, the concrete tiled stuff. Um, so quite happy, really like this product. This is a product from um, Gerard Roofing. All right, so the team from Gerard, thanks. They've done a nice job, boys, putting this on, looking really good. Really, really good option for Jadine. She's decided to go with this tile look, and I think it's really good because it's just a little bit different. Um, the only thing we've got to finish along the front here now is just a bit of a cap to go on. A couple of ridge caps at the very top, and um, it's all done. So the dwelling is now all waterproof, and it makes it a lot easier for us to work below and carry on doing what we're doing. Hi, I'm Ivan, and this is my tip of the day, roofing. Well, probably one of the most single most important things on your home, i.e. it keeps the house nice and dry and um, no water coming through your ceiling, which is a little bit unpleasant, I would imagine. At Fowler Homes, we've always used a product called Gerard. Gerard's a well-respected well brand in New Zealand. It's a metal tile, so therefore it's lightweight, and it's really important, both in Canterbury and throughout New Zealand. New Zealand's in a seismic zone. The more weight you have on your roof, the more the house is going to move in an earthquake. It's that simple. Um, the Gerard roofing tiles that we use are several profiles, several textures, multiple colours, often too many colours, so we normally suggest to a client what to use, and often that's followed just based on our experience. Um, the roofing, obviously, rain falls on it and it falls into your spouting, and your spouting obviously d takes the water away into your downpipes. And the products we use there are from a company called Continuous, so we minimise the amount of joints in your spouting because they extrude the shape of it, the length they need, on site. And um, so roofing is really important, particularly weather we're um, having this winter. It's been pretty damp. So in, in short, roofing, Gerard tile, continuous spouting. That's my tip of the day. With the roof on Jadine's house, to continue making it watertight, the external walls have been wrapped in building paper. OK, so now we're at the stage where we're um, wrapping the house up and um, Fowler Homes, we use the Tecton um, building wrap, which is a bit of a waterproofing sort of system that gets put on the homes these days. So it's the barrier that we use between your cladding and the inside. Helps keep all the moisture and stuff out. Um, a lot of companies like us like to brand it up, so obviously you can see who's building the home, which is probably a pretty good thing. Um, and the other thing that happens as we move along here, We've got an opening in this, in this wall here, which is, it happens to be the garage. There'll be some um, internal tape that gets put on here. The boys haven't put it on yet, but they'll be putting it on. So that'll give us um, a waterproofing system in the corner here so that no water gets in behind any of your windows or your doors and uh, gets onto the framing. So the whole idea behind this building paper is to keep your home waterproof, but it also needs to allow airflow through so that um, your home can stay dry. And um, we also use a wee bit of the blue banding tape, which just helps to keep the, uh, the wrap on. Because you can imagine when it gets really windy here in Christchurch, the stuff can flap and it makes a hell of a racket, which is a bit of a pain. So uh, tape on, building wrap on, ceiling tape in the corners to be done, and we're going to be ready for cladding. Over in Sumner, will Jane's house get its roof or will the delays continue? Hi, I'm Dustin, and when it comes to resource consents, this is my advice. The best thing we can do, really, is try and design a plan that doesn't require one. Um, a resource consent can be a, a long-winded and arduous process, and depending on its complexibility, uh, a number of um, neighbours around you will need to be contacted, which in itself can be quite tricky. Um, you only, it only takes potentially one of those neighbours to disagree with uh, what you plan to do or what you plan to build and that whole process becomes really, really tough. So the best thing to do is um, design a plan that doesn't require one. And in most sites in Canterbury we can do that. Um, conversely, there are other sites unfortunately the, that will have um, a resource consent requirement and, and if that is the case then at Fowler Homes we'll work with you and work with the council to try and resolve that as quickly and as painlessly as possible and um, ensure that again you're getting the home that you want. But my advice, um, try and eliminate the possibility or the requirement for resource consent. In Redwood, Jadine's house has been roofed and the external walls wrapped in building paper. To finish making it watertight and secure, the doors and windows have been installed. 
G'day guys, okay, now we're at the aluminium joinery stage, so we've got all the external doors and windows um, are in. A um, couple of interesting things to note with aluminium joinery, there's quite a few different profiles and things that you can choose in Christchurch, there's a number of different manufacturers. Um, for a long time now we've been dealing with a company called Rylock Aluminium. Now the Christchurch branch is locally owned um, by a family, which is really, really good. And um, we just find that the, the boys are really, really good to us and the product is, is really, really good. There's a huge range of different products that you can choose from. So you can have a, a standard residential suite, you can go to an architectural suite, or you can even go to like a, um, a commercial suite. So having those three options available within one company is quite good, particularly when the client's needs can vary from home to home. Um, so it's all about the look. Now, in Jadine's case here, we've got uh, going from the living room outside, there's not a lot of room between the house and the, and the fence, so we want to create quite a wide opening for her, but not have something that's going to impact on the way she goes out, like doors and bifolds and stuff. So this one here is called a um, biparting slider. So you can actually open both doors at once and create quite a, a generous um, opening to get out. If uh, the space is not that large, but you want, you want to create another generous opening as well. So in this particular unit here, we take the first one back and then it picks up the second panel and you can slide the whole thing open and it all concertinas back into the corner. So again, it's all about generous opening sizes, getting from inside to out. Um, but having um, the Euro stacker, which is what this is called, I mean, it's literally finger pulling stuff. It's really, really simple, very, very smooth, um, easy to operate, good for the kids, good for the family. Um, and you know a really nice profile. The, the profile is not thick, so we're not impeding our view. Everybody likes lots of light and, and good um, visual. You know when you're looking outside at your barbecue areas and that sort of stuff. So Rylock Aluminium for us provides all of that sort of stuff. Good quality suite um, worth its weight in gold. Great. After checking out the building progress, Dustin arranges to meet up with Jadine at her local coffee shop for a chat. So hey, it's nice to catch up for a coffee. It's been uh, it's been pretty busy up to this stage, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yep, definitely, definitely needed this coffee today. Yeah. So you happy so far? We've got the frames up. We've got the roof on. Is that um, what you thought it was going to be? No, no, it's not. It's so much better than what I thought. Really? So yeah, each process that we've kind of come through and and have been coming to, I've kind of walked in and, you know, jaw's kind of dropping, wow, this is a lot better than what I had anticipated. Mm. Even the roof. Even the roof, you like the roof? <laughs> Are you happy with the roof? You can, you can trust me now, can't you? You can finally say that we got it right. I think I can trust you. You still drive a Holden, so I have my doubts. But um, yeah, the, the roof um, situation, you know, when I first saw the, what the roof was going to be. I, I wanted the, you know, the colour steel, um, yeah, the long run stuff. Yeah, learning things every day. And um, it was not that. And I kind of thought to myself, that's really not what I want. And then it's like going through the process and um, Dusty actually took me out to Horswell. We went out to Horswell, didn't we? Had a coffee, went out to Horswell and looked at different houses and um, just different ones that you guys have built and things like that. And then I saw the roof that was going on my house. And I remember saying to Dusty, actually, I really like that roof. And you had already told me, you said, look, trust me, Jay, this roof is going to look really good on your house and the style of your house. Can you please just trust me? And I was like, OK, reluctant. Oh, yeah, you drive a Holden. And then... Um, so, and then actually seeing it, I, I must say, high five Dusty. Every house includes hundreds of metres of wiring. It might not sound sexy, but if there aren't enough plugs or lights in the right places, it can be really frustrating. Decisions need to be made before the electricians start feeding the wires through the walls. Okay, so one part of the build obviously is sorting out your electrical and where your plugs and, and lights and stuff are going to go. Now, before we start at the beginning of the job when we quoted it to Jadine, we provided her with an electrical plan. And what that does is it shows her where all her lights and plugs and stuff are going to be. Um, generally a nice colour plan like this. So this is done by the team at Laser Electrical. 
and it gives her an overview of what she's going to get and where those components are going to be. Now the second part of that is that Jadine would um, meet up with Garen in the office at Laser Electrical and go back over this plan. Um, again, it's just a double check. He can show her the type of fittings that we're proposing to put in and, um, and then she can confirm if that's okay. Third part of that is uh, she'll meet with um, Adam on site and we'll actually wander around the house, go into every single room, identify where those plugs are going to be, where those lights are going to be and discuss any other things that she might want to include. Now, it's not about upselling her, but it's just making sure that she's got all the bases covered. Um, things like adding HDMI cables, if she's gonna have TVs in the bedroom, is really, really important. And it's not until you wander around the house, particularly when the framing's up, that you can identify that. Um, in some cases, clients might choose to um, tone down the electrical, so if we've got four lights in a bedroom and two's adequate, she can discuss that with the guys on site. So that's what she's gonna be doing shortly, and, um, It'll be, again, just double checking to make sure everything's in the right place and that we've got everything that we need for her. In Sumner, Ivan's still waiting for a delivery that could put the build back on track. Will Jane get her roof? In Sumner at Jane's house, the wait is over. Ivan has good news for Jane. He's climbed on top of the world, or at least the scaffolding, to share it. Yeah, hi, well, we're back here in Sumner and Jane's Reef's on. So this is a, a monumental time for clients. Now uh, the reef has just started at yesterday, I think it was about two o'clock they started it, so it wouldn't have taken them long to finish. And I just wanted to roll through all the differences in this product to the other one on the main north road. And uh, the last, the other job we're doing we had a look at the roof, it's a colour tile roof, a Gerard product. Uh, this is a colour steel roof. Um, the primary difference between the two is, because obviously they're both roofs, is that um, one's a different profile, one's a more traditional tile look. And this is what um, commonly is called long run. This particular profile is called diamond deck. It's a tip, another roof is a corrugated one. Um, the reason we've used this in here is that Jane preferred this over the tile. Um, the other important thing on this particular location, being close to the sea, we get a lot of salt and sea spray that forms on the roofing. And uh, for that reason, this is a higher grade. It's got a VP colour steel. So it's a, a thicker coating of paint to protect the roofing longer. Um, ridiculously, um, to maintain warranty on any roofing product, you're supposed to wash it down. People think that the, when it rains, it washes the roof down. Yes, it does to a degree, but um, a physical wash is always better. It's highly unlikely that anyone would ever get up on their roof and wash it down, which is always a bit of a, a nonsense in our industry, but um, if you read any specifications and warranty issues, um, that'll come up. The second part about this job is, as the roof is a VP colour steel, so is the fascia. The fascia's got a thicker coat of painting on it, so that it protects it from the salt spray, and so has the spouting, which hasn't yet been fitted. Um, when you look at this roof, the method of fixing it is also different. We use a tech screw. Uh, the old, older roofs around Christchurch will be nailed on, um, some with the old lead head nails and some with a, a modern version of that, um, which I call a spring head. And there's a little seal under each of the, the um, tech screws. You can see that one's actually sitting a bit high. The roofer needs to screw that down a bit more. But um, th this is a, another benefit what we're looking at here face to face of having scaffold on a job, we can actually get up and physically look at the roof. We can check it for any damage, not that we tend to find any. If you look up on the roof a bit, you'll see an upturn in the tray. It's the upturn in the tray is to stop any driving rain getting underneath the ridge cap that'll be fitted on top there. And um, that's it's a requirement to have that, obviously, to stop any water entering in the home. So um, yeah, it's a nice simple roof for the roof. We must, must have done this in his sleep, I think, because it's bloody straightforward. But they've still got to hump the iron from the ground, hump it up here. It's a sharp product, it's very light, but yeah, windy conditions makes it harder. Um, again, reefers, modern reefers, like all trades, uh, are very skilled. Back in Redwood, Jadine's checking out where the plug switches and light fittings will go. She's making sure everything's in the right place before the electricians install hundreds of metres of wiring into the walls and ceiling of her home. We did a basic plan of everything, where the plugs were actually going to go, um, which is actually a lot more difficult than what you think. Um, because again, you've got that budget you have to stick to, and I kind of wanted to put plugs everywhere, because every time you go to vacuum or something, you never have a plug where you want it to be, so um, we did the, the initial plan and then I actually came down to the 
house and then walked through everywhere that I'd put one and then I actually made some changes to what we'd already um, done because I knew that I'd put them in the wrong places. So yeah, it was really good. Because anything to do with electrical, anything, I know absolutely nothing about. I've never had to experience anything like this. So I really did rely on, on these guys. And I also gave Dusty a call and, and said, you know, do you think this is right? Can we walk through this together as well? So we came down and um, I had another appointment here with Adam and Dusty was here as well and we walked through and they were talking about HDMI cables and this and all of this stuff and it was like a completely different language. So what I was thinking was, because pretty much all of the TVs are going to be hanging, Right. so can we lift it up? Move it up, yeah. yeah. So if you're going to hang them up high, do you want any sort of like HDMI's around from the top down to the bottom? I don't really know what you're talking about. So are you going like, to ever plug like a DVD player or a PlayStation or anything like that? Possibly, yeah. 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 So if you're going to put the TV up high, obviously you don't want any cables to come from the TV yeah, yeah, yeah. hanging across from yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if we're we put... move them both up. Yep, so we'll move them both up, but we'll also put some HDMI cables in there for you as well if you wanted. So then they would explain to me what these different things were um, and why and, and everything and, you know, it made so much more sense and then I could kind of go, yeah, well I do need that and I don't need that and, and um, again, having a good project manager that can help me and guide me through those things, you would say, look, Jaden, do you really need that? Um, yes, no, you know, so um, would just get me asking myself those questions to make sure I was making the right decision for us. What I was thinking with this plug here yep. was I was thinking to move it down here. Sure. Because yep. um, I'm probably going to use that, I was thinking of vacuuming and all that, vacuuming. and if it's down there it'll just give me that little bit extra to... Yeah, that's fine. Is that cool? Yeah, no, no worries. Yep. It's probably in the central point of the yeah. hallway. You I'm use actually it for a thinking or about taking well. this part of the wall out. Right. Doing the walkthrough with Adam, um, we made a few minor changes um, to the plans that we had, had already made um, because having that actual one-on-one -on -one with the electrician, um, yeah, we moved certain power points up higher and lower and to go where the TVs are going to go and things like that. With the roof finally attached to Jane's house, the builders are moving on to make her house watertight. The external walls are being wrapped in building paper designed to keep the moisture out, but allow the house to breathe. Hi now, we're back at Jane's finally. She's got a roof on, the much awaited roof. Um, There's only a momentary delay there, of course. But uh, now the roof's on, the fascia and gutter are on, we are able to put the building wrap on. Um, that gets delivered in a roll. It's a 2.7 metre long roll. It's quite, it's quite hard to handle, so it's a two-man job to put the stuff on. Uh, the boys run around the house, stretch it out just like a big blanket, staple it on, and uh, then put some strapping on over the staples just to hold it there in windy conditions. Next time on Your New Home, Windows let in the light at Jadine's house, but will Ivan manage to make up for lost time at Jane's? That's next time on Your New Home. Actually, I am, I am being serious. Lisa, Simon, could somebody get down on the ladder so I can actually get down, please? Okay, thanks. <laughs>